Hi everyone, I'm Amanda Culkins, Publisher Development Team Lead at Commission Factory, and I'll be facilitating today's webinar. Today's webinar is how to make noise with an addictive podcast that also pays for itself. We're joined by Josh Butt, who's the executive producer and founder of Ample, and Michelle Lomas, who's the general manager at Ample. Ample is an audio experience agency in Sydney that specializes in audio-led entertainment, branded TV shows and video, and especially podcasts for brands of all sizes, which is exactly what we'll be discussing today. Thank you guys again for joining us, Josh and Michelle. Good morning. Um, thanks, Amanda, and to the team at Commission Factory um, for giving us this opportunity to talk to you today. Before we begin, we'd like to acknowledge the traditional owners on the land on which we're all on uh, and pay our respects to elders past, present and future. Um, at Ample, we're a full service audio experience company. Uh, we specialize in audio strategy, in creative, original and branded content. We distribute the content in media uh, and we report results to share quality ROI with businesses so that they can see what their audio dollars are doing to drive growth. Audio isn't just podcasts. It's your brand logo. It's your audio channels. It's your smart home skills. Alexa, order me a slab of my favorite ginger beer and use the offer code AMPLE. That's the kind of way we see audio going. It's about thinking of your audio brand, your audio experience, your conferences, or even an event like this as an entire audio, sonic, or voice experience. But whatever we do at Ample, we're always audio. Even if it's comedy TV series, it always starts with a podcast uh, or an audio experience of some time. Now, our mission, um, is to reinvigorate the art of compelling audio storytelling to a new generation and enable every great storyteller to find their voice and be heard. And what that actually means for us is that the audio we make must be highly educational, highly entertaining from a diverse group of storytellers who are telling us or making us stories that have not necessarily had the opportunity to be heard before. Maybe they, those storytellers didn't know the right people or they didn't know how to get in the door. So what we're doing is we're looking for really interesting people from different backgrounds who want to tell stories that we've never heard before so that we can change our perspectives or learn something and grow. So if you think about the history of audio, over the last 150 years, there's been a lot over it, but over the last 10 years, it's really become something very, very different than we ever thought of before. So here's a video about who we are and what we do. Hang on, let me hit the uh, get you in the mood music button. We don't, we don't need music, Josh. Yeah, no, 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 we, we do, we do. Meet Ample, Australia's premier sonic studio. So if you hadn't noticed, the way we listen has changed. Audio is very personal. It's hands and eyes free. And it's intimate, right in your ears. Three out of four Aussies streamed audio last month for an average of 12 hours a week. That's about six podcasts a month. Audio is becoming very interactive. It's three times more attention grabbing than video. Podcasting is now mainstream. And yet four out of five brands don't have a sonic strategy. So, how is your brand heard? We create your brand sound. Criminal Domain. Sponsored by Norton Lifelock. Proudly supported by HSBC. We create podcasts. You didn't even buy a tent. Did you think we may need a tent? The camping is all about being ill prepared. Schlepping his wheelbarrow with all the paints and easels and who knows what else that guy's carrying. That was the problem with Monet. If you're a female nurse and you have your kids in the hospital where you work, it's not quite as cute because everybody's seen your family. <laughs> That's never happened before, I'm so sorry. <laughs> we create music. We create audio education. Talking head pain, where we confront pain head on. The Gaucho. 
a new podcast all about dealing with gout. It's crucial that patients play an active role in the PBS. And we distribute your audio via all media. So how does your audience hear you? Ample. Hear, hear. Is this thing on? Yeah, that's on. Don't touch that. Today's agenda is about why podcasts, how to create a great podcast, uh, and really have, how to make money from it. So I'll let Michelle take over from here. All right, so let's get started. I want to talk a little bit about the facts first. Um, so why podcasts and I guess why all the fuss? So starting off, look, podcasts can now be considered a mainstream medium. Over a third of Aussies are now listening to podcasts at least once a month. A majority of those actually listen to a podcast at least once a week. I don't know about you, but I certainly listen to, you know, two to maybe even five a week on my commute and on the way to work. So that's an increase of 48% year on year, which is pretty crazy. We definitely have COVID to thank for that, but also adoption has been really high due to just the high quality of content that's available in Australia. And in fact, Australia leads the way in podcast listening alongside the US, which might surprise you. And that is predicted to hit 15.4 million by 2025. We can also thank the boom in just digital audio listening in general, which has increased to over 12 hours spent on average a week. So smartphones, portable devices, and in-car digital audio systems have really made it much easier than ever to listen to podcasts, no matter where you are. And 55% of Aussie households also have smart speakers in their home, of which the primary use is listening to music, news, and yeah, you guessed it, podcasts. So who's listening to podcasts? Most people we speak to assume they're kind of the young professional millennials, and you're not really wrong in that aspect, but podcast listeners are maybe a little bit more diverse than you think. They definitely skew towards high income earners with higher education and over half of millennials listen to podcasts, but over half of Gen Z also listen to podcasts. So it's a really great space to start to reach that really tricky audience. And just under a third of Gen X also listen to podcasts. And finally, 13% of boomers round out those numbers. So quite interesting in terms of the boomer number as well. And we actually predict that might be a little bit higher the older you get because a lot of the older generation tend to listen to podcasts on YouTube versus listening off their smartphone devices, for instance. And people are literally listening everywhere. They're in the car, they're on the commute, they're in the gym, and alarmingly, they're also at work. So keep an eye out for those people with their headphones in. And the fact is, if you love podcasts, you really, really, really love podcasts. Most of your podcast listeners listen up to five podcasts a week. I think I'm definitely in that bucket. But almost 12% of listeners listen to 11 or more podcasts a week, which is pretty crazy. So listening's up. We know Aussies really love to listen. They're listening to all sorts of podcasts wherever they are. So it's a really, obviously, great time um, to launch a podcast or to run a podcast. And it's great for content creators because it gives you kind of that freedom uh, to create whatever you want. Um, uh, and there's a lot of storytelling opportunities, which we'll talk about soon. But there's also really great news for advertisers. Listeners are really open to advertising in podcasts, particularly if they're host read. So 78% don't mind the sponsors because they know they support the delivery of great content. And 74% like the way that the sponsors fit well within the content. If you've got a great podcast and a great host and creating something that feels really authentic, you're going to really get a great response from your advertising. And as a result, ads have higher brand recall, they have um, higher consideration, et cetera. And almost 70% of, of people survey agree that podcast ads make them more aware of new products and services. So recall is great. But with all that said, the reality is that podcasting is not an easy nut to crack. There are 3.2 million podcasts on Spotify at the moment. That's about 50 million apps you could potentially listen to. With that diverse range of content, most podcasts actually have less than 1,000 listeners per episode. And only 57% of listeners listen to that all the way through an episode. 
but never fear, that's why we're here. So with some smart planning, you can crack the code um, and make an impact. So now your podcast audience, uh, however big they are, they will expect your show to be great. And making podcasts is really different to all the other type of content that you're going to be making. It's intimate, it's in your ear, and people have really chosen to listen to it. They're audio first, so they've got to sound fantastic. You can't have bad audio quality because people won't be able to understand what's going on. They're very much audience first, so they've got to be talking to that audience. But they've also got to be, be a format first because a great show has a really tight format that moves the stories along or moves the information along. So once you create that format, you don't deviate from it unless you deviate from it completely because you're doing something else. But before you buy a microphone or create a sound studio, you've really got to think about five things. So the first is what's our idea? What do you want to say? Don't do anything after, until you figure out that. That's like the first thing to do. Um, now the rest, the second one is who's the host and the talent. These kind of happen a bit organically as well. But if you're going to use Ben from finance or Shanequa from marketing, then that's fine. You can do that. But the host does have to be an authentic person for the story that you're telling. That host must speak well. They must be a subject matter expert and they have to be really right for the show. You can't really trust someone who's never done podcasting before. So you have to think about the people that you're inviting onto the show as well, because who are they? Um, how good are they at speaking as well? And why are they being invited to talk to your audience? The third thing is story. What is the story of the show? It comes back to that great idea. What's the story of your brand? What's the story that's going to be told in each episode? Why are people going to listen? We're very, we, we listen. We're, we're listeners. We only started writing a few thousand years ago. And before that, it was all campfire tales. So you won't remember necessarily all these points, but what you might be surprised uh, about is that you might remember this really joyful story that's only six words. A cry rings out, life begins. And now that six word story has sat with me for years and it's six words, but it's just such a beautiful way to capture life starting. So think about those stories, however simple they need to be. Number four is how are you going to grow your audience? Because if you can stick a great idea with a great host and you can share a great story in each episode, then your audience actually will grow quite rapidly, organically, because you pick up followers through Spotify or the distribution um, channels, and that audience will then share your great story through the mouth or through LinkedIn. Last on this particular list, it certainly should not be last in your mind because there's so much that can be done with a great podcast in marketing distribution. There's live events, PR, media, promotion, but most importantly, it's all word of mouth. The best podcast picked up when someone says to you, hey, um, you listen to any good podcasts, right? And that happens to me far more regularly uh, than I like. I'm always having to check out new podcasts so I can have something new to, uh, to listen to. Michelle's going to go through this in a bit more detail as well. Yeah, so we're going to break down those five points. So if you're taking notes, don't worry, we're going to go into more detail. So starting off with finding your idea, this is, you know, really the most important and crucial part. And as Josh said, don't do anything. Don't buy your equipment. Don't start recording until you've really nutted this out. So first things first, when you're planning your podcast strategy, it's coming up with that idea. And there are lots of things that make a podcast. It's great, compelling stories that move or entertain you, authentic voices that are genuine and connect, a purpose-driven focus, and unique characters or hosts that are really memorable and authentic as well. That's why it's important to really do the work uh, and map out your idea. Don't just start with an idea and run with it, because that is where a lot of podcasts fail. It's important to do the work and make sure that your idea is the one that will stand out and be memorable. And most importantly, is true to yourself and what value you can bring to the content and that it's true to your audiences too. So we're going to show you a little framework that kind of works for us and works for a lot of our brands too. And it's about setting a clear vision. That should encompass more than just the content you want to put out there, but who 
who you're doing with, what value you can bring, etc. So starting out, you really need to start about you. And who are you? Well, you're, you might be the host, or you might have a host who's going to do it, but what value can you bring? What are you good at? Ha have a real think. Are you an expert in something? What is something that you really love to talk about that your friends go, God, you never shut up about this? Because that's probably the topic that's going to be the best for you. And more importantly, what version of yourself will you be? We all have different versions of ourselves. For instance, I'm a business leader, but I'm also a mother. I'm a book enthusiast and a mad reader, and I love karaoke. So which version of me am I going to bring to the podcast? It's not about bringing all of yourself. It's bringing that special person that's going to be authentic. Next is thinking about them. So them, of course, is the listener. Who are you speaking to? What are they like? What's their background? Ask yourself the hard questions. Would they listen to this content? What are they truly seeking from your content? And don't be vague. It's really uh, tempting to say, they're looking to be inspired but that's not something that they are seeking they're looking for something very specific for instance if they're looking to be inspired maybe it's for business advice on how to scale a small retail business or advice on how to live a more conscious life with small everyday steps so really think about the specifics and be specific next is the what so this one should be pretty self-explanatory but what do you have to say what's your core message and the takeaway that you want your listeners to understand and walk away with. And finally, why? After they hear your podcast, what do you want them to think? What do you want them to feel? Great podcasts really resonate with listeners and the thoughts and ideas linger long after the podcast. So what is it that you want them to take away with them and think about later? Next is to really, it's really important to find your niche and doing that practice in the framework prior should be able to set you up pretty easily for this. Finding your niche is really important in podcasts and finding that space that you can truly own. Trying to be everything to everyone doesn't really work in podcasts. It's really more important to find your niche. We'll talk about that a little bit later as well when it comes to monetization and how that can help you down the road as well. A really great example of this is the Shameless podcast. They really built a large and loyal audience by really being true to who they are and what they wanted to deliver. It was celebrity news for today's young women who crave more than just the salacious headlines, but real depth and meaning. And if you've ever listened to a seamless podcast, you would understand. The next is doing the work to ensure success uh, also means really getting to know your audience. So it's really easy as creators to be in our own head. We like the ideas or topics, so everyone will. That's wrong. Podcasts are weirdly intimate, and that's really the beauty of them. So understanding your audience, their intentions, motivations, and life stage is really crucial to make sure you're creating something that's truly going to connect. I personally recommend creating personas of your intended audience, really fine-tuning them, making them beautiful, reading them, rereading them, understanding them, and then printing them up and putting them up on the wall. Read them every single time you're about to record an episode or create one so that you're really getting in the mindset of your audience and you're remembering that as you're recording. And always remember that listeners of podcasts are looking for more. So there's a recent study that came out by Rory Morgan that showed that out of all the channels consumed, podcasts by far are the primary choice when it comes to people wanting to learn more. That outranked TV, social media, online articles, the lot. So while our podcast charts may be dominated by news, radio, catch up as well, also think that, you know, while people want to learn more, they also want to have a good laugh. And that again transcends all ages. So think, learn more and funny. And once you have your vision, your niche, your audience understanding, it's a really great exercise to define your purpose in a sentence. If you can't say it in a sentence, then you probably need to work a little bit harder on your idea. Here's a few examples that we think are great. For instance, She's on the Money, one of the number one podcasts for women in the country talking about women and finance. Their purpose, be the one-stop destination for millennials who want financial freedom. The second one, Beyond the Frame, which is an ample original, actually. Educate on the stories behind famous paintings for the experienced and the not-so-experienced art lover. 
And finally, pick your form. We could do a whole uh, webinar just on form itself, but there, there really is a lot of different ways that you can play with form to get the right tone and engagement. Form is really an important to step because it really helps define uh, the podcast idea. And there are multiple formats you can take from the more traditional chat style format or the narrative style. The beauty about podcasts is that sort of endless ability to be creative with formats. And remember to have fun too. Uh, you don't have to stick to the traditional forms. You can, you know, kind of make your own and make some twists. Uh, it can be surprising for listeners as well as hosts and guests. For example, this is one of our, our own. We created a brand under TV show called Waltz in Jamaican and we thought, oh gosh, it'd be great to actually do a podcast as a compliment to the TV show. So as part of our film, we decided to put a, a basically a microphone in with Jamoan, who would have a, a guest in the car. And in between our locations, which was up and down the road trip, up and down Australia, there'd be kind of like two hours of them sitting in a car and chatting. And uh, we turned that into a podcast and it turned into an incredibly surprising, sometimes very intimate sometimes heartbreaking, often very funny conversation about, you know, whatever they felt like talking about. And you can listen to the uh, podcast wherever you're listening to podcasts and you can also watch the TV show on tenplay.com.au forward slash Walton Dash Jamon. Hashtag uh, shameless club. <laughs> okay. So I'm we, very mindful of time. So we're going to get speed it up a little bit because we've got a lot to do, but you've got to have a great host. When they speak, they're your brand's voice. And people listen by default. We can't shut off our ears. So how does your brand sound? And what tone does your host have? Your host has to be experienced, relevant, a great active listener. Be very comfortable with being unscripted, but super curious and need to know that they're only going to be speaking 20% of the time. They've got to be asking great questions. They must be very generous. And that person can be start clients, partners, there'll be lots of contributors to the show and there'll be lots of voices from your company or um, related to your company heard. Those voices got to be heard in your content, otherwise it won't be authentic because these people know your business. But your host doesn't necessarily have to be from your company. Celebrity hosts, very, very interesting choices. Here are, six, here are some of the some more famous podcasts with famous hosts. 75% of shows have a celebrity host. 90% of the top 200 have a famous person as the host. Some pros, you're borrowing their audience. They're, they attract other high-profile guests. They'll get you PR. You can have an ambassadorial relationship with them. You could use them in your marketing. They can be your voice of internal comms even. You know, they could be on your hold messaging because people hate listening to, you know, more than 10 seconds of kind of repetitive hold music. So you could use them that way. But if you don't pick the right voice for your company, they may not be relevant for your podcast, which might bring you a negative return on PR. Or if they don't know the topic very well, they can only fake it so much. Ira Glass, who's the grandfather of podcasting, has a weird nasally voice. But the story he tells on This American Life some of the most interesting and well-crafted in the business. So it's not necessarily all about the voice. It's really about telling a great story. I, I tell a lot of boring stories, which is why I love editing myself <laughs> when I'm doing a show. Um, and I tell way too many stories and far too many details. So it's really important that you set the scene understand the characters, make sure there's always some sort of conflict. Someone's not getting something that they want. There was a challenge, but then there was a great resolution. And, and you know, it's really important that you always are telling a really, really good story so that people can learn and evolve from when you're spending time with them. But the other thing is, is that it, it, the story the story is invisible, right? So you've got to have great sound because you've got to set the scene to have it really vivid about what you're talking about. So if you're talking about travel, for example, always very important to say, I got on the plane and I landed in New York. Hey, get out of my way. I'm going to count. You know, sorry, I'm terrible at 
um, any kind of accents or imitations. But but you really want to set that scene in the same way that a TV show would set it with an establishing shot, you're doing that with an establishing sound. Um, if you go to say, for example, uh, tropical Queensland and there's a great big thunderstorm, use those sounds. Combine the music, make sure it's really good. Don't use average stock music. Don't be boring about it. Think of the theme. When we did a show called Modern Baby, there was a lot of conversation about how IVF is a bit of a dance and they kept talking about it takes two to tango. So we created a music, a music soundscape that revolved around tango music. We used a lot of audio effects on all of our shows. We make sure that we use ambient, ambient sound and foley, and we always make sure that we get a really good sound mix and that music, the, the, the music and the voices are mixed really well. So it all just sounds fantastic. And also you need to have an audio logo and you need to have little sound effects if you've got a great website that goes with it because it's about your entire tone of voice, your tone of sound, your tone of audio. So you're really inviting people in. If you want to hear some great sound design, here are a few um, podcasts to check out, including obviously one of our own. The reason why we included the Waltz and Jamoan podcast is a lot of the sound was terrible because we were driving, so there was ambient driving noise. So you can hear how we've actually cleaned up that audio, made it sound much better. So if, when you're building an audience to make a great show, um, you've got to think of your cover art, you've got to think about your social media, You've also got to think about your audio channels. If your podcast is educational, you've got to educate in your promotion. But you also have promotional space within your show. So you might want to cross promote someone else's show that's either connected to your company or connected to your industry. But you really need to think for a long-term building of an audience. It doesn't just happen instantly. And if you're not doing that long-term plan, and you just want to test it with a couple of episodes, you want to start really light, like with four or five episodes and just see how it goes. Uh, it, it's not going to work. You're not going to be happy with the results. You really got to think six, 12, 20, 24 months in advance and have a really long-term view over what you're doing so that you can really build that audience over time. That probably makes a lot of people very kind of nervous because it's such a big project, but it's not, not always a massively expensive project. It's just a long-term one. And then you want to distribute it properly. You know, we do, when we distribute a podcast, it goes out to all of these places instantly, automatically. If we, we, Spotify's got 290 million users. YouTube is the second biggest search engine. So they have to be video friendly as well. Apple Podcasts is pretty much neck and neck with Spotify over who's got the bigger audience. Google podcast, obviously Google, if the podcasts have a huge amount of transcription. So SEO loves it. Also, you've got to think of Android users. Amazon Music, uh, 105 million users and iHeartRadio, their podcast app, iHeart Podcast, that's got over, over 1.2 million Aussie users and, and it's, it's the number one podcast app. And they're not wrong. It's a fantastic place, but you've got to be everywhere. Can't be one or two places. And for the once a client told me that they were on SoundCloud, and if you're on SoundCloud and that's it, no one's ever going to find you. So you've really got to think about that. Don't forget video. As we said, video should be very much a part of this audio strategy. Thirty percent of the listeners um, are video YouTube uh, video podcast consumers. But with all the social media and all the marketing, video is just a, a crucial part of what you're doing. And people love to ask me about like audio tricks. So you, you always have, if you've ever listened to podcasts, you know that every time you listen to one, someone will say, rate us, it makes a difference, leave, leave some feedback. You, you must do that with yourself. You have to ask for feedback and respond for feedback. Feature your hosts on other people's podcasts. Make sure PR is really a part of what you're doing. Make sure you're using it in media really smart. Think about events. Think about your partner's events. Think about your host hosting at conferences. 
and be really clever with media. You have to, yeah, unfortunately, you have to spend money to make money, but you, so you've got to think about 20, 30, $40,000 media spend to support that over the course of, you know, that first series. It really needs to be part of it. You've got to grow that audience quickly, making sure people are following your shows is really important because every time you get a new follower, you also just be, had a friend in the audio world. So you've got to think about that. Okay. So now you hopefully have made a killer podcast and have an amazing strategy, a great, great idea and an awesome host. Now it's time to actually make some money from your podcast. So some great news. Like I said earlier, podcasts are really attractive to advertisers. They're a great channel to reach an East audiences with very specific interests, as well as potential customers who might be more receptive to some of those products and services. There's less ad avoidance in podcasts than any other channel. There's higher consideration, better recall, um, particularly thanks to more of the intimate nature of the medium. Uh, in fact, podcast advertising performs almost four times better than video. And as you'll see on the right, podcasts perform exceptionally well on both awareness for both light and heavy podcast listeners across the entire purchase funnel. It also presents great opportunities to access exceptional creative talent and thought leaders and leverage their expertise, which again is really attractive to advertisers. So with all that said, there are some ways that you can start to monetize your podcast to attract advertisers. There's ad placement, sponsorship, subscription, and of course, affiliate marketing. So starting off with ad placement, first is kind of the traditional ad placement. Depending on the length of your podcast, you might have a pre, mid and a post ad placement. And it's really important as you think about the construction of your podcast and how long it will be, whether it's a 15 or 20, um, an, an hour and 20 minutes or Joe Rogan's now two and a half hours, who knows by this time what it will be next year to really think about how many ad placements you want to do because that obviously does interrupt the listener experience as well. But typically ad placement can garner anywhere from $25 to $70 CPM, and which is a cost per thousand impression. And that's really dependent on the type of content, your host, your audience numbers, etc. Advertising is also really different in podcasts, so something to keep in mind. Post-read ads generally perform much better than pre-recorded ads, and audience is much more receptive to the host-read ads as well. And the longer the ad, the better. So think about creating a longer form, not a 15-second necessarily, but maybe there's a 45 or a 90-second where the host can actually talk a little bit more about the product. Sponsorship is also obviously a great opportunity to help support the funding of your podcast. Just remember that it's a little different in podcasts, though. It's not just a numbers game, but more about the niche audience that advertisers might struggle to get anywhere else and the ability to be really fine-tuned on their messaging and reach an audience that's going to be much more receptive. So when you're thinking about your sponsorship, really think about the two types, both the value-based and also maybe a brand-funded. You might be able to collaborate with the brand and create something that's really unique just for your audience that still aligns with the theme of your podcast but allows the brand to have a more meaningful our play within that content. Subscriptions are also great, but only if you're a larger network. We wouldn't be thinking about this as you just sort of start out, but keep it in the back of your mind. There's really great opportunity to create subscription packages that give listeners a little bit more. If they really love your podcast, they're probably going to want to spend a little bit more, not necessarily a lot, but a couple of extra dollars a month to get access to maybe early access to the podcast, additional content, ad-free listening, etc. And then finally, definitely as you're starting out, really think about affiliate marketing and and considering, you know, the, the cost for CPM, et cetera, and the fact that you'll be growing your audiences, affiliate marketing can actually be one of the best options for you to start to garner some revenue from your podcast in the early days. Um, this is essentially an agreement between the podcaster and advertiser that offers a commission on every sale that is made by the podcast. No cash is transferred up front, but rather at the end of the sale, um, and it's tracked by a unique code. Commissions vary by sector, so it'll just be something that you would negotiate directly with the appetizer. Thanks so much, Michelle. What we also wanted to do today was to outline a few tools that Commission Factory provide that can be really helpful in monetizing your new podcast. 
So the first is the partner marketplace in the Commission Factory platform, where we provide an ecosystem for partnerships, which really helps content creators connect with advertisers and vice versa. So the first step being put those connections together. The second tool I'd recommend is clicklist tracking codes. So as Michelle mentioned, you can track via a code with the Commission Factory technology. We can actually automate that whole, that whole process. So exclusive codes can be assigned to specific partners and don't require any click-based tracking, which is particularly helpful in both video and audio content. So probably the perfect go-to to utilize in your new podcast. And then as Josh pointed out, now earlier in the session, some podcasts are actually watched and the content is consumed via YouTube or in a video form. So for that, QR codes can be utilized and hosted in your video content or on the video imagery to just track and monetize that audio visual content, which means you can maximize your touch points with your audience and increase chances of converting sale as a publisher. So you can make sure that, that you're tracking and being uh, compensated for the brand advertising that you're doing. And then real-time reporting insights is probably the last thing I wanted to specifically touch on because this can be really helpful to inform your strategy and analyze what's working well. So what, what brands are actually performing well for you, what what products are selling so from an advertiser perspective as well? What, what products are actually selling with which partners and which publishers? Uh, you can even use custom reporting to measure the success of campaigns or specific podcast episodes through using our unique ID functionality to really customize those tracking links and have those additional data points that you can refer back to. So that kind of concludes our content um, and we'll jump straight into the Q&A section for today. Some people have actually submitted some questions in advance. So we're really excited. You guys were as excited with today's content as we are. So I'll probably start with those, with those pre-submitted questions. Um, so similar. Uh, so Michelle and Josh, I might throw two, two at a time over to you guys. So the first one is, I'd like to know the basic instruments in setting up a podcast without a lot of expense. And the second one is what basic equipment, microphone quality, et cetera, is needed to produce a quality podcast? My recommendation is that's not necessarily the right place to start, but you, you, can, you can get amazing quality USB microphones like this. That's a, called a, a Blue Yeti. I don't endorse that. We're going to obviously I want to have a conversation with anyone who's got any microphone companies or headphone companies so we can get some affiliate marketing tracking going on in our shows. So if you sell microphones, give us a call. But yeah, you, you definitely can do it with just your standard USB mics. It's all about the editing software as well. There's Adobe Audition, which is relatively easy to use. There are, there are a bunch of free thing that if you've got the right distribution platform, you can actually edit your podcast live in your distribution platform. It's not very, it's, it's very cheap to start, but I guess my opinion is no, you should, you, you do need to have a great sounding environment. If you, if we've gone into our conference area, which as you can hear is a little bit echoey, right? So we would never record a podcast in here. And we, in future, we won't be recording webinars like this uh, without a few extra sound equipment to muffle the echo a little bit. But we just moved in next, last week, so we didn't really have time to think about uh, decking it out. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah. And I guess what I, I'd probably just add to that, you're starting out, your it's you're going to just record things and maybe you'll, you'll be a, a fresh newbie with sound design. But we really talked about the importance of sound design when someone's listening and it's in their ears. If they're just listening to somebody talk the entire time and there's no background music or, or sounds that are coming in to bring depth to the story or what you're trying to say, it can be hard to listen to. And I'm sure we've all listened to that where we can tell the difference between a really well-edited podcast versus something that's just kind of been 
pulled together and put out. So really consider that and your editing software and, and asking for help. Maybe you can record it, but you can work with a company that can really edit that, edit that for you. Yeah. Thank you guys. Excellent advice. I'm lucky enough to be in the Commission Factory Media Studio today with these uh, soundproof walls. But I've actually, I'm by no means experts in this space, but I've, I've seen people actually put up foam on their walls to kind of help prevent that echo and, and the bouncing of sound. Yeah. It's also, it, it looks hilarious when you see it, but egg cartons are amazing, actually. So if you want a really cheap and cheerful one, just collect, make everyone in your company collect egg cartons for a few weeks. And then just stick them up on the wall, paint them black, some heavy drapes. It's, it's really not that um, hard to do it. And so, yeah, so be, yeah, maybe stick your head under a duvet as a lot, or, or, a, or a big blanket or a towel like a lot of journalists do when they're on the road. Having a great quality mic is a great place to start. If you want to understand the prices, anything under 150 bucks. Don't worry about it. Just it's it's one hundred and fifty to a thousand dollars is the price that you're going to start at. Yeah. And then a Zoom recorder, like a recorder, a portable recorder, and then a mixing desk, and I could spend twenty five thousand dollars in five seconds because then I've built the sound studio. But yeah, it, you can take it really far. But start small. Yeah. Um, I can see a couple of questions coming through. Do you want me just to roll through them? Yeah, I have one more actually that was submitted um, in advance to the webinar. So that one was, what are the biggest mistakes that people make when setting up a podcast? You don't want to jump the gun and book all the talent before you know what your show is. That's probably the first thing. You don't want to hire a venue before you know what the show is. You don't want to tell the world that you're doing the show until you know what the show is. You don't want to have... You don't want to release your first show necessarily as your first show because a lot of times you're trying to figure out creative being creative is really messy it's really it's it's stinky you're in the mud you don't know what is this working does anyone going to want to do this so you want to actually play and what is you want to be want to be childlike about it in your like uh, learning and creativity where ample operates very much a learning and creative environment and culture. We are, a, I didn't know if this was any good. Can someone tell me and give me some feedback or I was trying something a bit different. Is this, is this good? And we have a no judgment, just talk about the work, not the person kind of approach. And we expect throwing out ideas is really important. So you wanna just have a lot of ideas at the start and then really sharpen that pencil over time. Give yourself a break. Like when you're starting something like this, You've never done it before. You've never created that show for the very first time. It doesn't exist. You're taking, you know, it's just, it's just here. Just yeah. there, just, and then you're making it. And then suddenly after that first export and you hear it, you go, oh, that's what this sounds like. Oh, I hate this. This is terrible. And then, and then you get on with, you know, refining what it is. I'll, I'll add a couple of things too. I think one common mistake is recording something before you've done your strategy. Like we talked about in the, the first section, finding your idea. Often your strategy would dictate the questions that you ask the guests you have, things like that. So don't jump the gun, really know and do the work and know your audience before you start. And then the second is back to the point that I said before around the sound design. I have listened to some incredible podcasts with incredible people, but with no sound design, I'm sure that 90% of people didn't get first through the first five minutes and it's a shame. So really, really think about your sound design as an important part of podcasting. I can just see that uh, there's a, a question there about publishers uh, who do great affiliate or advertising well. So, so there are some amazing success stories around affiliate marketing and advertising and podcasts. MailChimp is like the leading one. Squarespace, I have a personal website thanks to an offer code from, from a podcast I heard years ago. That's why I have a Squarespace website. Koala Mattress because of Koala. Shopify do great, do great affiliate marketing because you're talking to a niche market or a niche audience. If you partner with the right show um, or you have a great product that will speak to that audience, affiliate marketing works really well in podcasting. And what I'd say is 
I do have one example that I can share with you, which is a great example. But when you're thinking about partnering with a podcaster and having an advertiser involved, it is a true partnership. And the more that you put into it, the more that you're going to get out of it, like everything. And so an example that I worked with a New Zealand company who is a health and wellness company, they brought out uh, a new tablet that's for um, all the meat nutrients. If you don't want to eat all the offal, and if you didn't know, liver and kidney and stuff, there's a lot of really great nutrients in it. So they turned it into a pill form and they partnered with a very, very high reach. And we're talking about half a million listeners an episode, uh, podcaster. And they knew the benefit of really partnering with him properly. So they flew him down to their factory in New Zealand and showed him how they made it and talked to him about the product and really invested in that. And the first episode that they featured, they sold over $100,000 worth of product. And so that's an incredible case study, but also one that you can understand when you put the work in and really partner well and with partner with a great podcast star, there's a lot of benefits that can come from it. And, and, and just as a final thought, for a brand like that, they're going to want four to eight week engagement with a podcast. So to answer your question, how many episodes should your podcast be? If you're not really starting with, if you're not starting with 12, 15 in your mind, and not necessarily every day, like it could be weekly or it could be fortnightly, but if you're not starting with a bulk, then having that conversation with that partner will be really hard. But having that conversation with the audience that we're going to give you great offer codes every week to use in those products, which you want to see those products change a little bit on the show so that the audience can see that there's value in, in, in that additional marketing and podcast. Amazing. Thanks, guys. And we just have one final question. And I, this one was actually for Commission Factory. And it was if we have examples of publishers and advertisers who have formed partnerships through podcasts. And in addition to some of the examples you guys shared, we do actually. Our friend Lucy at Beanstalk Moms has a fantastic podcast. And she actually worked with one of our mom and baby brands and utilized clickless tracking codes to actually be able to track that activity. So yeah, absolutely, we have some examples. We're conscious of time, so we'll start to wrap it up there. But thank you guys so much, Josh and Michelle, for sharing your insights with us today. And huge thanks to everyone who has joined us um, as well.